Hi, I'm Nate, and you're watching Photo Learningism. I wanted to reach back to a, uh, a product that we looked at before, uh, Digicam Control. It's an open source free tool that can control a wide variety of camera types and models. Uh, can also uh, can extend the functionality of a camera to a certain degree. It's a very exciting tool. I want to look at today how the tool supports multi-camera support and what that can do for you. Let's step into that right now. So I'm Nate, this is Photo Learningism. Thank you so much for joining in. If this is your first time, thank you so much for being here. I do a lot of work on this channel to build a community of learning to surface the cheap or free art technology so that you can know about them and make the most of them. And also so that you can be a part of a larger community and learn things yourself and share your experience with others so others have that benefit as well. So thank you so much for being here. Getting back to Digicam Control. We've looked at this in the past. If you haven't seen it, go watch that video card over there and uh, get a sense of what this tool can really do. Today I'm going to focus specifically on the multi-camera support functionality. Some really, really cool stuff that this tool can do. Now the button that we need to push is this one, multi-camera control. And right now, I'm going to twist this in because this is typically how it looks. You'll see that it has my iPhone, which is my second device right now. It actually can't control that. It's interesting it picks it up. Um, but it sees there's a second device, and it's really just kind of there for purposes of demonstration. Um, it will work with my Nikon D5300, which is the second device. Um, so again, we can kind of see some of the aspects. I'm just demonstrating that it can support multiple devices. And these would keep stacking up, by the way. The only limitation I read about in the documentation for devices is the number of USB connections that you can have available to your computer. So if you can work with that, there really isn't a limit, a known limit of how many cameras you can park into this system, which is really cool. So knowing that, let's look at this and kind of quickly dig into what's going on here. Okay, so this is kind of the quick control panel of each individual device. If I try to snap a picture on the iPhone, it'll try, it's gonna fail, so I know that there's gonna be a funny error method about that, but this one will work. If we look at settings and things, first of all, we could just right from here, snap some pictures as it was. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna try it here. Of course, this says this uh, method or operation is not implemented because it has trouble controlling iPhone. So that one, I'm gonna do one on the Nikon. There it goes, it fired. <laughs> so you could snap one-to-one -one right from here. Uh, there's a hop to live view. Uh, there's some settings, which I'm gonna touch on, which give you some really interesting options. All right, so looking at this one, the settings uh, are all laid out the same for each device, regardless of what kind, just to know. Um, but I'm going to jump down here for a second. The keyboard trigger, this is kind of cool because if you wanted to fire a specific device in your array of cameras that are hooked up, you could make your own custom shortcut. I'm using Alt-K for this one. Just from the keyboard, I could fire that off and do it. So that's pretty cool. I did the same thing for my Nikon. I, made, I gave it a unique keyboard shortcut, Alt-J. So I'll demonstrate that right now. Alt-J, it fired. <laughs> there it goes. You can see the message there. So that works very, very well, very, very seamlessly. Uh, you have some other controls where if I wanted to fire both devices, or really all devices, at the same time, that we have to twist this over, and there's this capture photos option, which I'll click that, and it attempts to do them all at the same time, <laughs> which is really cool. So that's an option. Something else you can do here is you can go into the settings, like I'm gonna to go to my Nikon here, and I'm gonna say, um, well, your capture delay is one. And just note the first device here is zero. So what that's gonna do is it should sequence them. So I'm gonna click again and click capture photos. It'll try the iPhone first, didn't work then it'll fire the next one. So you could actually sequence these in the order you want, depending on the devices you have, to fire off in a specific order, which is another really cool thing. Uh, something you can leverage if you're looking to try to capture something that is time-based, maybe something's in motion. Um, you can add delay as well. Uh, so you could do that firing your cameras off at very specific times. So really, really powerful functionality to get into with that. The other piece of this, which is really cool, is the live view, which actually gives you the ability to do multi-feed 
video. And I wish I had a better demonstration of this. Again, my iPhone isn't picked up, but you can get the idea. Just use your imagination with me a little bit here. I'm gonna click into live view and I'm gonna make this window a little smaller so you can see the pieces of it. All right, so we start up live view. That kicks up the live view. <laughs> And right from here, I can start recording. Now, I could not find a way to force this to record to PC. So know that as you do this, it actually will record to the individual devices. And I believe the reason for that is so it doesn't have to sustain multiple HD video streams. That could pretty much knock your computer dead <laughs> with that much bitrate data coming at it, you know, all that, all that buffering taking place. So, uh, Know that if you're going to do recording video like this for multiple devices, it will be recording the video to the devices themselves. And then just as an extra step, you will have all those videos, but you'll have to copy that over to your computer for editing later if that's something you want to do. So that's how that works. All right. I'm gonna knock off this and stop. And that is really kind of the whole principle behind how this works and again this is really cool how this can extend your camera beyond what it's capable of doing and right now i'm driving my camera just through my computer which is it's kind of mind-boggling um, again the tool is digicam control i will put a download link in the description below so you can try this out it's free there's really no risk involved here um, to my knowledge, this is a Windows only tool, which I'm kind of sad to say. Uh, <laughs> I wish it was uh, beyond that window. Let's actually go verify that real quick, just to make sure that I've informed you correctly. But to my knowledge, this is a Windows only tool, which I understand that's kind of limiting. I'm sorry for the Linux audience. Um, download, we'll add pop up there. Yeah, it's actually not so, yeah, this is all .NET based. So this is definitely gonna be Windows only. So sorry, Linux, <laughs> sorry, Mac users. Um, but this again is a very powerful thing. If you're on the Windows platform, definitely try it out. Got nothing to lose, it's open source and it's very, very powerful. So again, this is photo learningism. I'm so glad you were here to walk through this experience with me and grow from this. If it was helpful, if it resonated with you, please give me a thumbs up. Please also consider subscribing if you haven't already so you don't miss out on the awesome stuff going on in the future. Thank you so much for spending your time with me through this video. Also consider leaving a comment uh, so we can share knowledge and experience. If you've had experience with a tool like this that actually does work on Mac or Linux, let us know because I would love this to be a technology that is flexible, it is operating system independent or, or just versatile in that way, I guess is a better word. I would love there to be an open door if you know of a better tool that does the same or similar or even better things. Uh, share that with us in the comments. Thank you so much, and I'll see you at the next video.